Pretty One Tears resumed regular distribution in San Bernardino, California. A city volunteer in Malaysia is dedicated to volunteering despite suffering from cancer. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. The epidemic outbreak in the United States continued, and shops that were originally reopened were closed again. In San Bernardino, California, the city has resumed normal distribution since July. Volunteers hope that the supplies they bring can help residents get through the difficult times. Some recipients expressed their gratitude. In the two months since Ducci's last food distribution here in San Bernardino, California, the city has reopened and shut down once again in response to COVID-19. As Tsuchi resumed its regular distribution again in July, local residents expressed their feelings about the ongoing situation. We were happy that stores had reopened, and everything was going to be fine, and now they are closed again. It was open for, what, a week or two? And then everything is closed again, so it's kind of sad. We won't be able to like eat out or you know go inside a restaurant to eat. So we're back again. We're back to uh, square one. So I actually appreciate that they're closing it back down, because when they started opening everything up, I thought it was actually too early. The virus is going to take off again, and sure enough, it did. I'm like, I don't trust nothing until there's a vaccine. I mean, you know, it's nice spending time with the family. It's just, you know, kind of harder on the. Uh, financial situation, but we're getting by. With the extended safer at home orders in place, families around the city continue to experience hardship, especially with the school year approaching. Yeah, it feels bad because we can't get out anywhere. We can't get out at all. It's sad. More so for the children. It has been very difficult for everyone. For the children, it's very difficult too because their schools are now closed. They have watched their dad and uncle become employed and they became anxious as a result. They didn't know what was going to happen. They were afraid we were going to get sick. What will the kids do without us? This is very difficult for them too. As residents face mounting difficulties with no end to the pandemic in sight, it is clear the work that Tsuchi is doing to help the community is more important than ever. So today, we might reach 500 distributions, 500 families. Um, we are only looking for more. Going forward, if the pandemic remains the same, we would like to um, regularly come back to, uh, to San Bernardino for distributions. Thank God, there are organizations like CG to help us. The money we save on food, we use it to buy gasoline and buy other necessities. The city of San Bernardino, uh, there's a 94% poverty rate. There's a lack of jobs. Some of the homes, as you can see, are vacant. So yeah, it's very easy to be um, discouraged in a community of 250,000 people. Your volunteers are out here in the hot sun, it's 90 degrees, and they're putting food in, into people's cars and they're directing traffic, all because they care about a community and they want to give back to the community. And that brings hope. A pair of father and son, Sun and Zhu, in Taishan, New Taipei City, has been receiving city's care for a long time. Recently, the 92-year-old father suffered from a fall, and his son suffers from cerebral palsy. Both of them have limited mobility. To solve the difficulties in life, city volunteers decided to help them move. Love is around, emphasizing on selfless devotion. Gigi volunteers help the father and son pair of the Zhu family to relocate. As space is limited, volunteers transfer the things in relay and with respect. Please leave this kitchen waste bucket, whereas for this one, please discard. It happened that the owner of this house wants it back for reconstruction, so he must move. He has colorectal cancer before and is not strong enough to move. After assessing their condition, Tsuji decided to help them move. Mr. Zhu, who suffered from cerebral palsy, and his 92-year-old father depended on each other. His father fell down before and hence has mobility issues. Volunteers specially went to their new home to provide professional haircuts and medical advice for his father. 
Just cut his hair a little bit shorter so that he'll be more comfortable. He's quite happy. After the haircut, he should feel more comfortable and cooler. Chichi volunteers specially cooked sweet soups to celebrate their moving to a new home. Mr. Zhu also donated money in Bamboo Kong Bank to express his gratitude. I'm very grateful for Cixi for helping me relocate. Volunteers contributed their money and efforts. With myself alone, I can't move so much furniture. The new home is decorated with love and is very convenient to assess. There is no need for them to go up and down the stairs. Volunteers also accompany the father and son pair to welcome their new life. Yunnan Kuming City volunteers participate in a weekly event caring for the visually impaired at a blind caring organization. They told stories about Jing's efforts to the visually impaired people and experienced the feeling of the visually impaired when going out with the assistance of professional volunteers. The visually impaired went to a blind caring organization together once a week. This time, they stopped listening to the movie, but listened to the stories of Jinshi aphorisms and classical guitar performance by Chichi volunteers. This time, the event is more touching than ever, because in the past, everyone just watched the movie and left. I think this event will get better and better, because the original intention of this organization was to help visually impaired people. With Siji's participation, I think it might have greater impact. Li Tingyong, who has lost his vision for more than three years, now opens his heart to see the world. Since April 2017, Siji started caring for our family until now. They gave us a lot of financial support and came to our home every month to give the whole family spiritual support. Later they sent me here to get in touch with others, making me open up my heart slowly. In fact, many visually impaired people are staying at home now, but they actually are very eager to go out. So what we want to do next is to train our volunteers with the skills of helping the visually impaired people so that they can achieve a new way of home visit by bringing the visually impaired people out. Blindfolded and holding a cane, Gigi volunteers try to understand the feeling of the visually impaired people. <laughs> Only by listening to professional guidance can the volunteers correctly assist the visually impaired people to walk into crowds in the future. Xinjiang Zhonggang Recycling Station started in 2006, but the building is over 50 years old. It has decaying infrastructure and a poor drainage system that caused smells leading to neighbor complaints. So the volunteers faced the problem and renovated the building with great care. Before I would need assistance with labor-intensive tasks, since the plastic bags are heavy, I cannot do it by myself. If the bags are black, we have to throw it away, but I try to wash it and sun dry the bags around the station. The collected recycled plastics at Siji's Zhonggang Recycling Station weigh 10 tons per month. Cleaning, drying, these two steps are necessary before giving it to official recyclers. Thanks to brother Cai Zhi, now doing this is easy. I will sun dry it first and with the switch on, the plastic bags will be mechanically moved around. Siqi volunteer Cai Zhi says these plastic bags for fruit may be small, though they are more difficult to process. Because it is wet, if the plastic bags go on top of each other, it will never dry out. It sticks together. This is why I use this machine to make the process easier. On the second and third floor, several double racks filled with plastic bags are undergoing the sun drying process. Due to the lightweight plastic bags, we have to prevent the wind from blowing it away. With good weather, if we put plastic bags in the morning, we could retrieve them in the afternoon. 
At the third floor, we have plans, a monastery to marvel at. Recently, a new building was completed near us. Because the recycling station is located in an old building in the neighborhood, the recycling that started in 2006 faced numerous issues and complaints. This building was built around the 1960s, which accounts to the fact that there are uneven floors causing volunteers to fall, causing injury. Our water without a proper drainage system spreads smell outside, creating complaints around the neighborhood. Both the Department of Health and the Department of Environmental Protection made visits to find us. During the Dragon Boat Festival of 2017, around 200 people were called to renovate the old building. They leveled floors, painted walls, and set up tents. These tasks will provide Sichi volunteers a safer working environment. I agree with the renovation. The floors have to be leveled since I'm quite old already. A Tsuji brother told me that the walls need to be painted, and I was quite surprised by that. After a few days, this will feel like a new home. <laughs> Redesigning the drainage system along with implementing proper filtering measures, Tsuji volunteers now wash the floors on a daily basis, keeping the station clean. One day a neighbor passed by and left a compliment. He never thought a recycling station could be this clean. This made me really happy, and I think this is a great achievement. The station is filled with good deeds for 14 years and still operates during summer as a newly implemented cooling system helps lower the station's temperature. This allows workers to work peacefully and mindfully. A Tsuji volunteer, Ni Lei Hoon, always appears in major Tsuji activities in Malaysia. She was diagnosed with breast cancer at the end of 2013. In 2018, the cancer spread to her lungs and bones as she was diagnosed as a terminal cancer patient. However, she stays optimistic and still gives of herself. The Kanya is full of classified resources solely for reducing environmental pollution. Come to see my little recycling station. Here are piles of paper bags and paper boxes. What I collect most is plastic. The whole bag is plastic. If the collected items are all gone to the sea or other places, you can imagine how serious the pollution will be. Huang Li Yun, whose mission is to protect the earth, is a terminal cancer patient. She needs to go to the hospital every month for follow-up. If I need to have the injection to prevent skeletal fractures, I normally arrive at the hospital at 6 o'clock and go home at 4 in the afternoon. Originally diagnosed by a doctor that her life was almost at the end, Huang Li Yun miraculously lived longer than expected. Later, I forgot I only had about half a year to live because I'm very busy all day. I need to pay home visits and do other things. I've totally forgotten about that. Then someone asked about it again. I just realized that I've lived for two more years. Actually, I can be so optimistic because I've learned a lot from the Alphans for lesson story. He was told by a fortune teller that his life could only last for about 40 years. Then he did a lot of good deeds. Eventually, he lived to be 70 or 80 years old. 
Even if she is sick, she keeps on cultivating diligently. After she had her breast cancer removed, she immediately joined back into the volunteering after two months of rest. That's the type of person she is. She not only faces her cancer bravely, but also takes good care of herself. After joining Chi in 2013, Huan Yun actively gave of herself in many major Chi activities. She is a role model for others. Many of those around her find her an inspiration as she gives despite being sick. She inspires us. When she encounters pain, Huan Ni Yun faces it with an optimistic and positive attitude. When I was in so much pain that I couldn't get up, I stayed on an armchair all day. I just thought if I could get better, I would do more recycling. Now I'm healed and have no more pain. When I go collect recyclables, I'm very happy. I go around to tell others that I'm very happy because I can do recycling. <laughs> Huan Ni Yun always wears a smile on her face, bringing warmth to the people around her. She turned her battle with cancer into strength to live, and keeps working on the Bodhisattva's path, living her life to the fullest. Nasmi is a disabled chess player who was diagnosed with type 2 spinal muscular atrophy when he was 11 months old. Nasmi, who once wanted to give up on himself, found the world to live in chess. He's now one of the national team players. I'm Nazmi and I'm 21 years old. I suffer from type 2 spinal muscular atrophy. Spinal muscular atrophy, type 2. The chess board is an important part of Nami's life. He started playing chess at 11 years old and has once represented Malaysia in chess competitions and won many medals. This time the opponent was the Philippines, so I was very stressed. At that time, he was still taking a college entrance examination. After the exam, he needed to rush to book a jilal for training. After that, he went home to take a rest. He went back to do the exam again early in the morning. This lasted for two weeks until the competition. He never expressed fatigue when facing different kinds of training. His keen chess playing helped him regain his confidence gradually. Board, um, board chess too. So you know what, to unang. I always fight for victory when playing chess. At the same time, it also gives me the motivation to live. When I play chess, I feel that I'm no different from normal people because we sit together to undergo competition. Nami suffered from muscular atrophy since birth. His muscle function continued to deteriorate as he grew up until his legs could not walk when he was 8 years old. At first, he couldn't accept it and often asked why. Because I couldn't play with my friends, my parents kept encouraging me for a long time, giving me the courage to survive. At least he can still sit up, and his mind can still think. He can write, read, and count. As parents, we certainly support him. Now I'm very proud of myself because I can represent Malaysia in the state. I feel very honored. I don't care about my illness anymore and don't feel depressed at all. The power of love from his family is the greatest motivation to support him moving forward. Now he works online sales in a non-profit organization called Jew Blessing and has a stable income, hoping to reduce the burden on his parents. He is very responsible and very focused when he works. From the beginning, he would take the initiative to learn something he wants. Sometimes I just gave him a guide. And then he went to study by himself, so I quite admire his attitude. His work attitude reveals commitment, and with a positive and optimistic character, Nami leads a wonderful life. 
Shimeisha took on the duty of a father since her husband passed away more than 10 years ago. This incident caused Shimeisha to feel gloomy and down, but to raise her three children, she works day and night. Shimeisha joins the opera club and volunteers, and she's leading a fulfilling life. <laughs> The busiest times of the week for Xu Meixie are Wednesdays and Fridays. She takes on three jobs per day on those days. At the time, my full-time job was a business assistant. Around lunchtime, I take on a restaurant job, and after work, I become a cleaner. Although Xu Meixue is 53 now, she still has responsibilities to attend to. I only have to do this for half a day. It's quite flexible. I can pick up my granddaughter after school. Xu Meixue's son had an early marriage but divorced. She is busy with work and now she takes care of a sweet angel. I want to comfort her because she takes on so many jobs and is tired. I like her. I call her mother, Gwenny. And I hope she can stay with me longer and take me to the park. I have to do a lot a day. And because we don't have enough space here, I can only use this place to dry the clothes. The family rents houses outside for 10 years, not returning to the house before, since it is quite a sad place. On behalf of Xu Meishui's children, she worked hard to provide better materials to them, but in exchange, she lost the chance to be with them. I eat meals by myself, breakfast, lunch and dinner. During high school, my daily allowance was 200 NTD, and during middle school, I had 150 per day. If I go purchase items for the children, I do it very fast because they already know what they are getting. So I just pay and we return home. The father was long gone and my children treat me as a father. They even buy me a gift on Father's Day. I do part-time work now to buy my mother gifts along with my sister. Now, Xu Meixue finds happiness in the process of theater and arts. I think my performance is quite poor, but other people enjoy my performance. Now, I feel a sense of achievement and happy. She always is fully booked, and she doesn't ask us out for plans. We have to find her and ask her. The relationships are seemingly lighthearted, but the thankfulness stored in hearts accounts to thousands of words. I'm telling you the goodness I have received from you. I will never forget. I always remember it. Yeah. <laughs> Did she go? <laughs> During the epidemic time, Northern California City volunteers deliver daily supplies and fabric masks to underprivileged families and farm workers. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.